What's going on guys, welcome back to Miniature Mayhem, my name's Chris. In today's tutorial we're going to be going over glazing and how anyone can use it to complement the colour schemes within their army. This is a great alternative to edge highlighting and it's really simple if we just take it back to basics. If you do find this tutorial useful, don't forget to head down below, smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Now if you want to start using glazes within your army's colour schemes, there's one thing you're going to need and it's Lamy and Medium. If you've watched any of my tutorials before, you'll know I say the words Lamy and Medium about 500 times. It comes in so useful, it's great as a thinning alternative to water as it doesn't affect the consistency of the paint. When it comes to glazing, Lamy and Medium and other matte mediums are absolutely essential as they make the paint more translucent. If you don't have some of this, I'll leave a link in the description down below. So let's get into it, let's make some mixes. So I'm going to create a 1 and 1 mix of Limey Medium and Paint, a 2 and 1 and a 4 and 1. And these are quite common mixes that I'll use in my tutorials and you can get some really nice effects with these. So let's mix them all up. In this example I'm using Pink Horror. For this project I'm painting the new Warsong Revenant for my Silver Nef Army, which is mainly focused around sort of like a cherry blossom theme. Um, so obviously I'm using pinks here. But this works with literally any colour and that's what's great about it. You can use base paints, you can use layer paints, it honestly doesn't matter. As long as you apply enough medium, literally any paint can be turned into a glaze. I've got a few examples in a minute and I'll, uh, we'll go through them together. If you look at the palette now, you can already see that the 4 on one is much more translucent than the 1 on one Now taking a look at the 1 on one mix here, which I'm just spreading out onto the palette, you can see it is quite translucent, but it does still have quite strong pigmentation. And this is great for army projects. The sword on this Ideneth model was painted using one or two layers of bone glaze. And I think it creates a really nice effect. When you are using a one-on-one -on -one mix, it's never going to be perfectly smooth. But that's not the goal. You're looking to create really striking effects that you can replicate army-wide. Now let's take a look at the 2-in-1 mix. You can see as I spread it out here, it's much more translucent. I like to reserve using 2-in-1 for character models or possibly like miniature heroes, a bit like this farce here. And this is a great example of how two different colours react differently with the medium. The grey and the orange are both done with a 2-in-1 mix, but as you can see, the orange is much smoother. This is because the pigment in the orange is not as strong as the pigment in the grey. But again, the transitions on the orange and the grey were both created with about three layers, which is easily achievable in a short amount of time. Finally, let's take a look at the 4-in-1 mix, which is way smoother than all of the others when you come to using it on the actual model. Now, I exclusively use this for like important character pieces, centerpieces of the army, and perhaps for entering uh, competitions. In this example, I've used it on the cloak of the Celestant Prime, which has been base coated in Mephiston Red and glazed with the Bad and Black. I think this is a great example of how any colour can be turned into a really nice glaze, as I think this transition was done using about three or four layers, and hopefully you agree that it looks pretty cool. Now that we've had a look at a few examples, we can come back to the wet palette and we're going to actually use the two-in-one mix that we made earlier. For the Warsong Riven, I've applied an all-over base coat of black, followed by a highlight of pink horror using the airbrush. I've tried to get this all over as much as I can, but mainly focusing on hitting it from above to give it some natural shadows in the leaves. And now applying a 2-in-1 mix of Emperor's Children Glaze, I'm just working my way around all of the leaves, and what you do is as you apply it, you just pull it down towards the edges, and this creates a really nice natural transition. And don't be disheartened as you apply this, it will be more obvious while it's still wet, as it will look a lot lighter until it dries, and then the transition will become a lot more natural. If you were doing this on a surface such as a blade, you try and do it in one smooth motion, rather than little motions like this, as I'm trying to cover quite a large area and lots of different sections. An easy way to tell if you're applying a glaze thin enough is that if you wait 2 or 3 seconds after applying it, it should typically be dry. As you can see with just a single layer of Emperor's Children, we've already created quite a nice transition on the pink. And now we're just going to accentuate that with a second glaze, which will cover roughly half of the previous layer. For this highlight I've created another 2-in-1 mix, this time of Emperor's Children and Fulgrim Pink mixed with Lamian Medium, as you can see on the wet palette. And I'm just applying this about halfway through the previous layer, again dragging it down towards the edge of the model to leave the majority of the paint around the rim of each leaf. This will create, once it's dry, a really nice and smooth transition. Now 
and there we have it with just a couple of layers of glaze I think you'll see you can create a really nice and easy transitions and some really nice highlights it's a great alternative to edge highlighting if that's not your thing it's also a lot easier to do if you haven't got a steadier hand I'm currently working on a tutorial for the rest of this model and uh, here's a little sneak peek of the back of it there if you haven't already, I'd hugely appreciate it if you smash the like button down below, share us with a friend who you think might find this useful, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.